is this is the meeting where we're going to do your board reorganization. So I'd like to entertain nominations for board chair. Andy, my second. Any other nominations? All those in favor of electing Andy Pond as your board chair, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Congratulations, Andy. Turn it over to you. And so we go to the vice chair. At that point, do I hear any nominations for vice chair? Nominate Kevin again. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Clerk, do you like to? Who is the clerk? Is it? Yeah, it's more. Hey. More. <laughs> more. Would you be willing to take on another? Sure. <clears throat> so nomination for I'll not any more. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Board representatives for the SU. Currently, it's Kevin Mort and Cam. Okay. I'm okay with staying on it. We can make a motion to keep the three that we have on right now as the SU. Sure. Okay. All right. I'll make that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Policy committee? Can I just ask you again who are the three? Kevin, who? Morton's hand. Morton's hand. Thank you. Policy committee? As Mandy. 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 Yeah. Well, I'll nominate Mandy. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Finance committee? So in lieu of a finance committee, um, you guys have been doing those two motions. Um, one that allows us to send payroll um, checks out for any board signatures and then um, other payments go out with uh, any two board signatures. Right. So if you want to come back to that, I'll come up with a, a real wording for that. Okay. And uh, executive council representatives must be one of the three SU board reps. It's you. Are you willing to take that on again? Sure. We had so many I dominate mm -hmm. You nominate Kevin? Okay. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. So we'll go back to the finance committee part. Is that okay. And so the first motion is uh, a motion to authorize payment of non payroll expenses after warrants are signed by any two board members. I'll make that motion as Morgan ran. <laughs> oh, sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the second is a motion to authorize payment of payroll expenses in advance of warrants being signed by two board members. I'll make that motion. That's more than You email that. Yes, email. please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> it's probably the same motion. Was there a second? Well. I'll oh, second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So it goes on to the room agenda. Yeah. You've got to do um, negotiations oh, yeah. and something. So what we have uh, now for the teacher negotiations, which is over for this year, is, remind me. It was, I was on, which I wasn't able to make any meetings this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was both of you for uh, support staff as well. Okay. So right now we're one meeting into support staff negotiations and okay. we have two more scheduled. Okay. And then next fall we'll begin on teacher and support staff negotiations again. Because these are both one year. We can keep it the same or okay, yeah, unless I out. can't be on keep the same. Wand, unless okay. one of you guys want to okay. step up and say thank you. Okay. Okay. So you could do teacher. I could do teacher, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I say keep it the same. Okay. I'll make a motion for and and hand. Negotiations. <coughs> okay. Uh, no, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And the stick back is currently Pam, 
um, because of a change in the master agreement, which we'll uh, talk about later. Um, there's only about three more months of work, so-called work. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That was the one you said. Sick leave bank committee. All right. Send agenda preview visitors none. So we'll go right to Lynn. Previous minutes and comments, corrections. I'll make a motion for approval. No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 master agreement conversation. So we've just finished, uh, we have a tentative agreement with the teachers union. Uh, so we've been working for a couple months to try to figure out, uh, to figure out a deal. So primary goals of this negotiation round were to really look at language in, in terms of bringing Sheldon into our FNESU. So in this next school year, as of right now, Sheldon will be a part of Franklin Northeast. So we knew this was the time that we needed to really look at comparing the language and benefits between those two systems. So we really looked at working hard to come to a place that made sense for both. Uh, we also looked at the work that we've done in the SU to identify why we're losing teachers. Um, we have, you as a board, have been a part of that conversation for about a year and a half, where we've really tried to unpack why, why it's difficult to retain and um, attract new teachers to Franklin the Northeast. Some of the data that we unpacked when we were looking at that was that teachers are generally leaving in years one through four. Um, if we can get them to stay past year four, the trend is that they tend to stay for a long time. So that was one of the things we wanted to focus on in this negotiation round. So I'm gonna go through some of the, the big changes in the master agreement. There are lots of little changes that I won't necessarily go through, but Morgan has sent that all off to you to read. Hopefully you've taken a look at it. But I'll just review the big ideas in this. Um, and then in the end, I'm gonna ask you to make a motion authorizing Andy to ratify the master agreement by signing away from the table. So if you have any questions as I'm going through, you can stop me. Um, so some of the big changes um, that we added included a section uh, under teacher rights around transfers and reassignments. That was something that was really important for um, our new partners in Sheldon, that they really wanted language in there to identify how we would make decisions around transferring uh, teachers within these new districts that are being formed or reassigning um, within districts. So we have some new language in that section. Um, we cleared up some language around provisional emergency licenses that is going to be um, kind of a clear ident identification of what needs to happen for those teachers that are in that situation where they have a provisional or emergency and that actually came um, from a recommendation from one of the teachers. It was a great recommendation. Um, cleared up some language on work day. Um, under work year, we were able to negotiate one additional day for our teachers, so that'll be one more professional learning day um, for next year that Beth will be able to plan with her teachers. Um, we cleared up, like I said, language around the work day and uh, preparation time for teachers. We also... Uh, Morgan's going to go over the major parts of the salary that we negotiated so that you understand the big concept around that. One of the things that we cleaned up was how we initially placed new hires in our supervisory union. So what has been happening, um, has been our past practices, when we hire someone, they go on the salary schedule for however many years experience they have will represent the step that they're on. 
it's not all that equitable with the teachers who are currently within our supervisory union because their steps no longer really match their years of experience because you have frozen steps in some years, you've taken them off the salary schedule and replaced them in other years. So this language uh, provides clarity around how we place them um, and it gives us a range of where to place people. It's a, a lot more equitable to how you're treating your existing staff members, which we thought was really important. Um, we did a lot of just date changes and making sure that we were um, picking a date that made the most sense between those two master agreements and that part. There are a lot of those little changes that don't impact change all that much. Um, one of the things that we did pay attention to is the retirement benefit. So currently you have a benefit in the master agreement for teachers once they've been within our schools for 15 consecutive years. If they leave, they get a retirement benefit of $125 per year of service. So we negotiated in language that's called a longevity bonus. So anybody that is this year in year five or beyond will keep that existing retirement language that we have had in there. Anybody who's in year one through four this year will be eligible for the longevity bonus, and so will all of our new hires. So as the years move on and the teachers who are in years five and beyond, um, that retirement benefit will kind of fade away over time and the longevity bonus will, will grow as we hire new people. So what that bonus does is every five years of service, they're given um, $600 as a recognition uh, and appreciation for staying within the supervisory union rather than waiting to pay that out after they've been here for 15 years. So there's another way that we could um, <coughs> offer something unique to attract new hires. We negotiated uh, around health insurance, uh, and we ended up staying with the 80-20 for the gold CDHP. Um, we kept the same level for your HSA benefit, and uh, we did put a little more money towards the, uh, the in lieu of insurance. Um, so that piece I, we thought was pretty strategic, and we wanted to make that feeling if someone had another way to get their insurance. Um, we wanted them to be able to do that. There is language in here around uh, teachers that are eligible for, to take coursework. All teachers can get up to three credits at the UBM winter race, so it's right around $2,000. It's just shy of $2,000. So we put a provision in there for teachers in their first five years of service. So if you have $2,000 and you take a course that costs $1,000, you have about $1,000 left in your what you have access to. At the end of the year, you can apply to get half of whatever is left applied towards your student loan debt. So this was another strategic way that we thought we could attract uh, some new teachers. So in the first five years, they have some ability to get some added pay down on that student loan debt. I mean, that was a Richford High School teacher's idea. I thought that that was, was a great idea, and the board really appreciated that idea, too. So the sick leave bank, Morgan alluded to uh, that it was changed in this round of negotiations. So the sick leave bank is going to fade away at the end of this year. And instead, we have language about sick day transfers. So what's been happening is we are still coming to you with requests for people to donate days to people who don't qualify for the sick leave bank. So rather than running both at the same time, we're eliminating the sick leave bank and just going with the sick, um, sick day transfer language in there. And there's some provisions for dealing with people who have already kind of invested in the sick leave bank. Uh, that's all been figured out. Um, we did some work to attend to seniority as we're moving into these new districts and we're bringing in a partner from another supervisory union, we're attending to that your seniority is your seniority uh, for continuous employment within the supervisory union instead of district. So if people are shifted between an F FNESU position or, or a Richford position or within the new Enosburg Richford Unified Union School District, it'll all count the same. There's no keeping track of seniority based on who the employer is. And that also applies to Sheldon as they transfer in. We didn't want them to feel any negative 
result of that transfer, so they will carry in their actual seniority from Franklin Northwest into Franklin Northeast. Can I ask a clarifying question sure. about that? Uh, would that, like, say an Enosburg teacher, uh, not Enosburg, that's a bad example. Say Montgomery. Say a Montgomery teacher came to work in Richford, or a Richford teacher went to work in Montgomery. Would they take their seniority with them in that case, too? Yes. Okay. You, I understood what you said Richford Enosburg because, yeah. and then you said SU, but you didn't, I wasn't sure about another town. Yes. Okay. Within the SU, Within because the, what we yeah. used to do in the past would, you know, when when I shifted from Montgomery to Berkshire, I made a request to the board to carry, Right. Uh, actually that might have been a sick day, I'm not really sure, but the seniority piece for now, we don't have to ask for that anymore. I'm just going to calculate it that way, as long as it's continuous employment within the SU. So Morgan, I'd like you to talk through the um, salary piece of the rotation. Sure. Um, so we were also looking at trying to combine the grids, um, the grid in, Sh in Sheldon and in Franklin um, Northwest is similar to yours in that they're both um, now dollar grids rather than percents. So as people move down, the salary schedule as they worked here for more years, they're getting a specific dollar amount rather than a percent on the base. Uh, and that allows you to um, come up with different ways to raise that base, which is the amount that you're paying for a brand new first year teacher. Um, the agreement that we came up with the teachers was that we would give them each a step, and a step value is worth $1,350. Folks who are off staff, we would give that same dollar amount. These are people who have been here for quite a long time and aren't captured on that grid anymore. So we're giving everyone a step. We added a few steps at the bottom of the grid to try to catch some of those people who are off staff. Um, but for hiring new teachers, what we're doing is we're dropping the top two, the two earliest steps in the grid. So we're cutting those two off. If you are currently a step one teacher, and there's probably a few of them here at the elementary school, we would give you a step, you'd move to step two, but since we're cutting off one and two, those folks would get an additional step this year. So those brand new teachers are gonna see a $2,700 raise instead of a $1,350 raise. Um, but do what that does um, for your budgets is that you are getting your returning teachers for about a 3% increase overall, which is right in the ballpark that you settle in every year, um, tends to be two and a half to three and a half. But the increase in the base, which is what you're using to attract new teachers, is actually going up 7%. So you're in a much better position competitively to hire the, the folks that we know that we're um, attracting up here right now. And Lynn pointed out in the meeting where we were last night um, that this is the first time since she's been in this SU that we're not the lowest paid in the county. So um, hopefully that's going to mean a better pool as you um, go out to fill openings in April, May. So you can see from the theme of what I just shared with you, we, we held true to what the goals were and and I will say for the teachers union they really understood and believe in the same goals that the board negotiation council had as well so I think that's why it was a successful um, bargaining between the two parties because we tried to do it at a in a place that like we knew that was what we wanted to work towards but we also knew we needed to be responsible about what our taxpayers could afford at the same time so we had that range that we wanted to get at and you know, Morgan was pretty masterful at recognizing that by removing those steps, it didn't have a compounding effect on the rest of your salaries on that grid. So that part made a big difference when we got into that process. So any questions? So if there are no questions, it would be great if someone could make a motion authorizing Andy Pawn to ratify the master agreement away from the table. Authorize Andy to ratify the master agreement away from the table. Second it. All those in favor? Okay. And then I am going to give you um, an Act 46 update. I brought visuals. 
tonight because there's a lot to talk about. No. Do you want me, do you want me to bring my sticky notes for next time? Oh, good. My little voting dots. We're good. So I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to go slowly. I want you to stop me if you don't understand anything, because I think that with all the moving parts and what's happening right now, um, it's important that you understand all of this. So the top visual is just my attempt at the representation of the Enosburg Richford Unified Union School District. You guys fall into the category of districts who are forced to merge under the State Board of Ed order. Um, so it's taking Enosburg and Richford and it's creating one UUSD board. Right now, the operational date for the Enosburg-Richford UUSD is July 1, 2019, unless something happens in legislature to change that. So I'm going to go through... Um, court, 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 court. Well, we're going to start with court, okay? So you guys are members in the group lawsuit associated with Act 46 that's really centered around challenging the constitutionality of Act 46. So one of the asks uh, of the plaintiffs in that suit was that Judge Mello consider granting an injunction for um, members of the joint lawsuit in order to force, uh, in order to stop all activity surrounding forced mergers. He, he gave a summary. He did not grant the injunction. And in his summary, um, he indicated there were some points that he made that I think if you read through carefully, it's a little less likely than what I think the plaintiffs were hoping for, that he is likely to rule in favor of plaintiffs. Um, so he still does have to hear the merits of this case, and then he has to make a ruling. Um, he has indicated that that ruling is coming prior to June 30th, 2019. So there, there was no injunction. The court proceeding does not stop merger for ERUUSD at this time. It's likely that no matter where that ruling lands, whether it's in favor of the plaintiffs or in favor of the uh, defendants in this case, that it's likely going to end up in the Vermont Supreme Court. So these proceedings could go on for a long time. It won't completely be decided by the end of June. So there's nothing really that is likely to happen in the courts that's going to change your operational date. However, there's some legislative action that I want to talk through with you. And this is a little confusing for the Enosburg Richford UUSD because uh, there are big differences between the House and Senate. So earlier in this legislative Senate, uh, session, the House introduced a bill, H-39, and in, the, in this version of the bill, the operational date for Enosburg and Richford to merge into the ERU-USD would be July 1, 2019. So that passed out of the House and it went over to the Senate Ed Committee. In the Senate Ed Committee, Senator Baruth uh, made an amendment. People are, are naming the amendment the Baruth Amendment. It's really the Senate Education Amendment. Um, at this point, that amendment has passed through the Senate Ed Committee and the Appropriations Committee, and it passed through a uh, second reading in the Senate today. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be heard in the Senate for a third reading. Uh, in the Senate Ed Amendment, it would give the elected Enosburg Richford UUSD board the authority to make the decision about the operational deadline for merger. It would decide between July 1, 2019 and July 1, 2020. So you understand the distinction there, that right now you have transitional board members. So you have Andy, I'm Andy, you have Kevin and you have Pam. And in Enosburg, they have um, Rick and Polly. So you, I'm going to go through what our schedule is, but you're going to eventually have a, an election for members of both communities to vote on elected board members to the Enosburg Richford UUSD. If the Baruth Amendment becomes law, the elected board members of the Enosburg Richford UUSD would be those that have the authority to decide the operational date of 2019 or 2020 for the ERUSD. So if tomorrow the Senate amendment passes through the, the full Senate uh, during the third read, it's heading back to the House, 
So if the House reads the amendment uh, that has come out of the Senate and they agree with it, the Senate will sign off, I mean, the House will sign off and it'll head to the governor's office for his approval. If the House disagrees with how the Senate amended H39, it's going to head to conference committee. So what that means is the bill is going to land in a small group of senators and representatives that are going to have to try to come to terms. They're going to have to negotiate somewhere in between the House version of H39 uh, and the Senate amendment of H39. And they're going to have to try to see if they can come to some consensus. Um, if they can come to compromise and they can all agree, they sign off on it and it goes to the governor to become law. If the conference committee cannot come to an agreement um, between the two sides, that those that bill and the amendment would die in committee. It wouldn't land on the governor's desk. So these parts are moving pretty quickly now. What I reported last night uh, at the Northern Mountain Valley UUSD meeting is a little different than what I reported tonight because of action that happened in Senate today. So we're trying to follow that information pretty carefully. So uh, the last part of that legislative process is around the governor's approval. So if, if the House approves the Senate amendment, it'll go to the governor. If there's consensus at the conference committee, it'll go to the governor. If not, if it doesn't come out of conference committee, it dies there. So there are some things that I've tried to really unpack in the Baruth Amendment. Um, Morgan and I both have, have looked at this uh, pretty thoroughly. So I'm going to give this to you, and I don't want you to get lost in it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the parts that I want you to, I think you should pay attention to. Um, so when you get it, if you can just flip it over and look at page 758. So I, I'm trying to unpack this amendment as it relates to uh, Franklin Northeast. So in order to unpack it, we have to build some common understanding of language. So at the top of page 758, I have some handwritten notes for you. So when you're looking through, it's important to understand these terms. When, it's, when it refers to existing district in this amendment, it's talking about a union school district created by a vote of the electorate. For Franklin Northeast, that means the Northern Mountain Valley, the USD. When you see the term forming district, it's the school district ordered by the State Board of Ed to merge with other forming districts. So that's referring to the Enosburg Town School District and the Richford Town School District for you all. When you see the term initial members, initial members of the board of the newly formed district. So this applies to Enosburg and Richford only. So that's referring to the elected members of the board. When you see the term merging district, that's a school district ordered by the State Board of Ed to merge into an existing district. So that applies to the Montgomery Town School District and to Sheldon. And when you see newly formed district, that's a union school district formed by the state board order by merging forming districts. So that's the Enosburg Richford UUSD. It sounds kind of crazy that we have to attend to those details, but you cannot understand this if you don't understand that language. Um, so when we went through this carefully, there, there was some clarification that we needed. So we reached out to because I, I do feel like it, it's my responsibility to make sure I understand it in a way that I can communicate to all of you what the potential is if this passes. Because whatever we're going to end up with, we have to be prepared to either go this way or go this way, depending on where this lands. And we need to understand it in advance to be prepared to do that. So I've reached out to the AOE, to the VSA, to the VSBA. I reached out to Senator Baruth, and I've reached out to legal counsel to get some clarification about what this means for us. So some of the information on here applies more towards NMV, and, and there actually is a whole other section of questions that I eliminated. You didn't need to get stuck in that place, but I wanted you to see it in case people are saying, you know, why is she contacting the legislator? I want you to understand why, because there's stuff that doesn't make sense for us in here. So um, when it's talking about merger deadline extension, I've highlighted that section, and we already have talked about it. For you all, as a forming district into a newly formed district, 
it's your initial board who's going to make the decision to delay. As you can see by the number of questions that I have outlined under the mergers of merging districts, that's related to Montgomery and Sheldon joining the NMV, there is quite a substantial, this is on this right here. There's quite a substantial list of questions. I'm on page two of the visual one, um, right at the top under um, II, under merger deadline. So all of those questions need to be answered in order for us to understand um, what those next steps would be. So there are a couple of things um, when we really unpack this that we think the legislators need to attend to, and that's what I've reached out to legislators about, is that there's a small school grant language in there so it would essentially provide Montgomery protection of their small schools grant right now Montgomery um, there's a competitive metrics that was created this year so because Montgomery didn't merge on their own they, they lost the automatic small schools grant however they met the criteria that was established for small schools grants so they're going to receive it for this next year but they're gonna have to reapply competitively every year if Montgomery merges in July 1, 2019, their small schools grant will be shifted into a merger support grant and they'll keep that in perpetuity or until the legislature changes the law. What they haven't attended to is Bakersfield has lost their small schools grant and they did not create a provision in this law to provide them a path for retaining that small schools grant. So it really is sending a dangerous message um, to a community who who follow the law and voluntarily merge that there's a penalty um, for favorably doing that. So we're I'm hearing that people are hearing us and that they're going to try to create some sort of a carve out uh, for that path for Bakersfield because it doesn't make sense otherwise. The other piece that we tuned into, um, we've talked about this already about the Union School District budget. So we're in that kind of a, a Place that feels a little uncomfortable. It's almost April and we haven't worn a budget yet. So there's a provision in the Baruth Amendment that provides a path for if you do not have an approved budget by June 30th, 2019, the, the agency will approve a budget for you that would be, in this case, it would take Enosburg's last approved budget, Ridgeford's last approved budget, they would add the two together, and then they would take the average increase in education spending statewide from this past year, and they would give you that percentage increase on top of your combined budgets from last year to move forward into 1920. So that's the provision for how it would work if the Baruth Amendment passes. Uh, they don't have language in there that says anything about existing district. So I've asked for them to clarify that so that there's a clear path for the NMV USD to have a path um, to an approved budget if they don't get one by their voters. So just to clarify, um, you're saying, or this is saying that we wouldn't have to warn a budget. We could just go with that amount of money if we so wish. It's saying if you don't get one, they're not they're not recommending you do that. But if you don't get an approved budget, then yes, you by you July can, one. By July one. Okay, but I, I guess what I'm seeking for information is uh, if it isn't if we don't have an approved budget by July one, then do we have to keep working or just uh, or is that our budget for next year? That's your budget for next year. Is okay, the way I understand it. Okay. As you know, because we talked about this a lot yes. as leaders, this target keeps shifting on us. Right. So we're zooming in, and this is what we understand now, but then as the process goes, it keeps changing and melding. So something totally different could come out of conference committee in the next week or however long it's going to be. Um, I think we'd also need to see what part of statute they're changing with that 100% plus 3% figure um, because my understanding of the 87 percent is that it's not that that's your approved budget it's that that is the number the state's going to use to send you the state aid but the expectation is that you're still going to come up with a final number from your voters at some point okay. Okay. and so it depends on if they're tweaking that part of statute or if this is something that's completely separate 
that's unclear to us. Okay. It's unclear to me. So I wanted to try to capture what's what's up for the ERU USD side. So I tried to give you a, a timeline. That's the next thing. So you know that we have warned an organizational meeting for April 11th. Um, I had originally told you April 9th that I needed to shift that date. So it has been properly warned for April 11th at 6:30 in the Enosburg Falls High School Auditorium. Um, it is pretty important that people show up at that meeting because that's where you're going to have conversations about how your new district is going to operate. Um, it is something that there was a motion the last time we tried to have an organizational meeting and I want to, I just want to be transparent about that piece. So there was a motion to uh, recess that meeting until the lawsuit had, had been determined. So that wasn't actually a legal motion because you cannot vote to recess a meeting without having a date certain to reconvene. So I did reach out to the person who made that motion to explain this is why we have to come back together and have another organizational meeting because we can't just we can't just recess and not have a time to come back. So she understands that we've talked this through. Um, Secretary French had warned the next meeting for April 11th. So that's what we have gone with. So here's the tentative schedule, and I'm saying. Tentative. I want you to keep that in your mind. These, as we understand the parts now, um, so we would have after the organizational meeting, we would warn a, a meeting of that the transitional board. We would that night have the ERU USD transitional board um, warn an election for board members. The petitions for those board seats would be due on April fifteenth. Then the, um, the, the transitional board would begin working on developing that unified budget to present to the ERU USD elected board members. And we've already been doing this parallel work. So we've been running the Richford budget, we've been running the Enosburg budget, and now we just need to have the transitional board look at the two budgets together. So we can be, we've been prepared to do it either way. So, um, you would actually have an election to get elected board seats to the ERU USD on May 21st. Then there are some ifs contingencies here. The jobs of the Eno of the elected board members of the Enosburg Richford USD would be if the Baruth amendment passes, if what's currently in Senate passes, that ERU USD elected board would have to decide the operational date of 2019 or 2020. So if they decided on 2019, they would that op, that elected board would approve a budget. They'd warn a budget vote on May 22nd because we're going to have that budget ready for that new board to look at. Um, and then you would have a budget vote likely on June 27th. Again, tentative. That's what we have plotted out. Those meet all of the proper warning periods. Um, if the newly elected ERU USD board were to decide upon July 1, 2020, the Richford Town School District would then approve a single district budget, warn a single district budget vote, and then hold a budget vote and a date to be determined. So those are kind of your paths forward. So if it's 2019, that's what we're going to do. If it's 2020, that's what we're going to do. It's only the elected board that can warn the budget vote, correct? The, under the transition board under the transition board can't warn right. a budget. Right. Okay. That's, that's no matter what, the transition board can't warn the right. budget. Yep. It's the elected board. Yep. Okay. What other questions do you have? I know it's it's complex. I wanted to get it in writing for you to be able to, to see it in front of you. And the board petition timeline is really quick, and the driver for that is given the April 11th organizing meeting. Um, the earliest we think we can do a budget vote is June 25th. Right. Um, if we had another week, we could build in a buffer in that. Window. There's a six Monday provision. Do you want to talk about that? So for um, Australian ballot votes for seats like you guys do in Richford, um, 
you not only have to meet the 30-day warning period for the election, but petitions are due on the sixth Monday before election day. So, yeah. So it's uh, basically a 42-day period to get your petitions. Embedded in a law book. That's yeah. all right. So we're going to keep working to keep you updated as we go through this process. Um, I'll send out information as things change, um, and if if something comes out of the legislator legislature um, before our next meeting or before April 11th, and we feel like it's urgent and it needs your attention and action, we would we would call a meeting. Um, to discuss that. But until that time, there is your update. And if you have any questions in between, just let me know. So, Andy, I just wanted to say that there's a VSBA training on May 15th at Lake Mori. If you're interested in going, it's a superintendent board chair training. Just let Doreen know and she can get you registered for that. It's just that one day. May 15th. May 15th. And then the Thursday, Friday, there's a training that I stay for. Um, I do just want to say there was something I wanted to do under organizational. We did this last year and I'd like you to do it again. Um, these are the code of ethics for Vermont school board members. I would like you to read the code of ethics. Take two of these, uh, read them, sign um, sign one for me, and then keep one. Good. High school window replacement project. Um, I sent out by email the bids that came back. Um, of the four contractors we invited to return bids, um, Kingdom Construction, who did the windows project in Enosburg and also did the building expansion in Montgomery several years ago, um, had a base bid of $439,400. Uh, Spates Construction, who we've also used regularly in the SU, um, most recently for the Berkshire expansion, uh, came back with a base bid of $376,400. Um, we also invited EF Wall and DC Glass to bid. Uh, my understanding is they did come to the walkthroughs, um, but didn't submit a bid. No, they didn't. They didn't? No, the walkthroughs okay. were only Spades and Kingdom. Um, Kingdom, I've heard, has a lot of work lined up this summer, and this would be a big project for them, so I think um, they likely bid a little higher, figuring if they got, got it, it would be worth it, but they didn't need it to fill their dance card. Um, we, 
my recollection is that it's a little bit higher than the numbers that we were kicking around earlier in the year. Um, the window costs themselves, we were talking um, in the low 200s, um, and then um, Black River suspected the work to put them in would be around 100 or 120. Um, so um, I asked them why they thought it was up, and they said they think it's largely because of construction costs, but it's hard to know um, when these contractors are bidding how much they're seeing coming down the pipeline. They have a lot of things that um, that are locked in or feel like they're likely um, they can afford to raise their bids a little bit. Um, there were three deduct alternates that would um, reduce that by about $10,000 if we took them. Um, that's not a huge amount of money in the grand scheme of things, so um, assuming you want to give um, Andy and I direction to move forward, um, I would probably defer to the architects and whether the amount that they're willing to take off the contract for those alternates um, is worth it or not. Uh, they need about seven weeks lead time and they think it's going to be about um, a little under two and a half months to do the work. That's a tight window then? I mean, it's starting the done day done. we get at done. And <laughs> no, it wasn't done, actually. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good attention there. It was done. In Montgomery, um, I think Kingdom came in under bid. Kingdom um, came in under estimate, yes. I mean, the amount Montgomery paid yeah. was less than what they bid on the project. So how does that work? They can't go over the amount that was bid, but they Correct. can come in under? Yeah. And they did significantly. I thought it was a significant. They did significantly under. I don't remember that they came in. They did. The, no, well, the amount we paid was less than yeah. what they bid. Is there a contract drawn up that will be done by a certain period of time? If it goes over, we get you can yeah. charge them. You can yes. charge them liquidated damages. Yeah, we will, um, we will need to negotiate anything that wasn't in the bid specs. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a standard contract that we use for the windows in Enosburg, and we've tended to use it for any any non-major contract. Like in the, the Berkshire project, that was a 200-page contract. Okay. Um, this one is eight pages. Okay. I will say, from my perspective, in Berkshire space was good to work with. They were they did what they said they were going to do and followed through. Did they come in under or over? They came in under. They were definitely not over. We added a lot to the project as we went along. Because they were coming they in. Were coming in so much okay. I think we did that in Montgomery, too. Okay. Are there provisions in there where uh, down the road if there's issues, adjustments, tweaking, that they'll take care of all that stuff? It must be once the windows are in. Yeah, the windows will have a warranty on it. Right? Okay. And they've been good to deal with on issues that have come up later in Berkshire. Yeah. Um, and I think Kingdom as well. How have they been? Like the new window replacements in other places, have they been satisfied with everything? Or they didn't. Well, uh, Enosburg, the windows are fine. They had to do some repainting um, on the side of the building that gets the most heat. Um, from the outside, I mean the sun, exterior? But yeah. Um, and the window uh, frame? Yeah. So um, and Kingdom's been receptive to, to those concerns. So I think, well, I worked with Kingdom and I thought they were great to work with, too. Um, but they told me King, that day, um, John Hemmelgarten and um, Kingdom said that the work in Enosburg is significantly less than what, what the project in Richford is going to be. Like They, they did some paint, painting and storm windows, and what we're doing is a major renovation compared to what Enosburg did. What do you need from us tonight? A decision or? We will need a decision, especially if you're going to try to get this done over the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so the base contract with Spates would be 364. You've got um, 144 in your capital reserve account. Um, so that's a good chunk of it. Um, but we've got uh, 200 and change to cover. Um, as we get closer to the end of the year, we'll be able to see what we've got this year. 
um, and to the extent that they're billing, able to get us um, some bills in June, we can use this year's money okay. to pay that down before we start tapping the construction reserve account. Okay. And then when we have a good estimate of what that would be, um, you will need to decide if you want to build the balance into your budget or if you'll want to um, get a loan for the difference. Okay. So, you know, I think we're at a point where, from what I'm told by, by Beth and Jerry and the folks in the building, the work needs to get done. Um, construction costs don't go down over time. It doesn't go down. The windows are in rough shape. I think in the long run, you're going to see heating and probably cooling costs go down because of it. Um, I think if you just bite the bullet and do what we need to do, does that include taking all the old windows away and everything? Jump for it. Jump for it. So it's just a matter of, I mean, Spates figuring out $50,000 there. Yeah. 60. 60. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we, the nice thing about inviting contractors is that you're inviting ones that you are confident can do the work. And these are two, um, that I was happy to hear were submitting bids when Marie level went down significantly. Where's Spades out of? Um, Derby. 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 They're Derby. both out of the Derby area. Yeah, that's right um, so if you're inclined, uh, I think it would be to make a motion to authorize uh, me and Andy to negotiate a contract with Spades for yeah. window replacement. I'll make a motion to authorize Morgan and Andy Negotiate with space construction or window replacement. I'll sign that. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Motion carried. That's probably enough for me. Okay. So, Beth. So, um, I need to go into executive for personnel, and I don't know if you want to start with that or if you want to end with that. Only end with that. I got a meeting to run to here. Shortly. So end with it? Yeah, we'll end with the executive session. Now? Start no, we'll with start with the other stuff. We'll end okay. with All right. executive. Yeah. All right. So, um, well, many of the items are listed out for you. Um, I neglected to put Sharon Matuno in as assistant softball coach. I didn't know she was. Mm -hmm. I, she does an awful lot for the school. She does... Um, Boosters. She does a variety, almost anything you need. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Who's it? What's his brother? I don't know his name. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jim's brother's helping too. I did not know you that. Did know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so I didn't put those on the report, but I just wanted you to know. I have uh, two letters of resignation. One is on my computer, and the one. Do you have that one? Um, who is the reading coach and interventionist here, uh, wrote a letter dated March 13th, to whom it may concern, please let this service notice that I will be resigning my position and not signing a contract for the 2019-2020 school year. Many thanks to Richford and Anthony Eshoo for helping me in the first decade of my career become a literacy specialist and the educator I am today. Uh, she's moving home, moving out to New York. And the second one is from Joe Marcille. The purpose of this letter is to inform you, the Richmond Town School Board, that I will not be seeking to return to work on August in August on a part-time basis. I will retire from teaching. I have sold my home in North Hero with most furnishings included and am taking this opportunity to move to Tucson, Arizona to be with my severely ailing in-laws and to support my husband's family in my best ways possible. As you know, I had a rather horrible year in 2018 due to my own father's debilitating cancer and his passing, which not only has ex was exhausting for me as a classroom teacher, but it was a true first time learning for me as to the rigors and requirements of in-home health care for the elderly. My husband's family is already relying on 
my own recent experience for guidance and support. I am saddened and emotional to depart the hallways of RJSHS. I am forever thankful for the support, the leadership, and the camaraderie among the peers that I have had at RJSHS. And I will surely miss the most, and I will surely miss the most, my most current students at the middle and high schools. I am hoping my retirement will be promptly, won't be pro promptly broadcasted to the students um, as I am hoping for a focused finish to the end of our current school year. I wish you, the teachers and the staff, a very successful new school year for 2019-2020, and I am confident that a highly qualified and professional replacement teacher will be found to assume French classes that were being proposed for me to be teaching on a part-time basis. I will truly miss everyone. Sincerely yours, Joe Marcial. Both are significant losses for your yeah. I know, but what are we going to do? We've got to advertise. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We're good. Yeah. I'm going to have to tell him tomorrow. He yeah. just gave me the letter today, yeah. but yeah. I can't wait until the next school board meeting to <laughs> post for the job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I need those letters accepted, right? Yes. Make a motion to accept letters of resignation. All those in favor? Aye. With congrats, yes. With congrats. Aye. All those. That motion carried. Sorry. <laughs> They're confused. So, um, as you know, Andrew Hathaway's um, retiring at the end of this year from, from this school district. And um, I'm not planning on replacing him with a humanities teacher. Uh, because Chris Hoy also has um, a hum uh, humanities or social studies license, and so does Robert Fair. And since I will be full time at the high school next year, we're thinking that Robert is going to co teach like a humanities class with Katie Gesser, and um, Chris Hoy will be co teaching something with Brian Garvey and for 10th grade, and then Liz Erickson will do the 11th and 12th grade. So um, I am advertising for a full-time math teacher and a replacement for um, Debbie Atherton's Family Consumer Science, which I'm not sure that we're going to find because that license doesn't really exist in the state of Vermont anymore, I don't believe. You, you need the license to teach it, but I don't think you can get it anywhere in the state. So um, I've been talking to Jamie about the possibility of doing something with culinary arts and what the licensure would be for that. And um, so we're, we're exploring, and there's another opportunity we're exploring as well. So we're taking the same amount of money, basically, or, um, and just allocating it in different ways. Okay, that's the plan. Um, I have a bunch of dates down here. Uh, Student-led conferences at the elementary school were held last week. Um, we're having our renaissance on April 3rd. That's our National Honor Society, a recognition for honor students in the middle school. Uh, Student-led conferences, which meets the requirement of the yearly review of the PLP um, outlined in X77 uh, for high school students are going to be um, April 10th. Well, really for grades 6 through 12 will be on April 10th. The high school spring concert, I know several of you attend that, is April 15th. At the elementary school, we're having an expedition of learning, so we'll have a musical play. The evening will start off with a musical play. I think we'll be serving like uh, grab and go pizza or dinner that evening and there'll be um, learning on display in the classrooms as well and then spring break and the senior class trip is scheduled for May 17th through the 20th and um, I was hoping Morgan was going to tell us what our surplus for the year or anticipated surplus was because there are a few things that I would like to overspend on prior to the end of the year I'm sure you're shocked but um we are very fortunate, and we've talked about this before, that Ryan Bushy has um, 
is a STEM teacher being trained through Upward Bound, several different trainings. He's bringing a group of kids to Florida in April, and he's given me a list of items that he um, needs in order to implement some of those classes for next year. And that, and we've been purchasing things throughout the year. We have, um, we had a grant opportunity. Um, he wrote a grant through North uh, through the credit union, uh, I can't country remember. credit, country. which one? North country, North country credit union. Yes, he wrote a grant. Um, so this, the total amount is twelve thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars and seventy cents for the for the items that he needs. Um, we are also fortunate that we have been selected by Amazon. Um, and Ryan is going to be the teacher to do some computer, computer science classes, and they are funding us for that. Um, we're going to be switching up our ninth grade science class to make it more STEM heavy, and, and there will be some environmental science in it, but we have found that the environmental science at the ninth grade level is in a large degree repetitive of what happens in junior high. So we're, we're going to do less with environmental science, more with computer science, and more with STEM opportunities at the ninth grade level. So that that's like a, a big wish for us. We'd like to purchase that now. And um, I talked to you earlier about a tractor uh, because when Gary left, he didn't, uh, he, he took his plow truck with him. <laughs> and so we, we, it's been challenging this year to remove snow. Um, and so the tractor and the parts would be, I think, between twenty-five dollars and $40,000. Um, we did, we're in the red right now, about $15,000 for buildings at the, buildings and grounds at the high school level, largely due to some repairs that needed to be done to the chip boiler. Um, there was a large crack in, in it and it was unsafe and they had to come in and do work before we could use it this year. And they're recommending a $5,000 further in repairs on that. And there's also uh, the air conditioning unit for the guidance um, is not working. And it didn't work all of last year, and that's $3,700. So those are my big, my, my big wishes before the end of the year, and they're, they're big ticket items. Um, and I don't know, I don't have any idea how much money we're going to have left. Can they wait till next meeting? Yes. But I, I wanted to get my wishes in here. I, I'm also going to email you this. I've asked Jerry to put together some of the things that need doing because there are some things in both buildings that need doing. A huge one at the high school that I think we need to do in the next couple of years is drainage. There's um, outside the cafeteria. If you walk into our cafeteria, and there's an exterior wall to the left water comes right down that staircase and in and there will be standing water on the cafeteria floor um, during spring or heavy rains and I think I the guy was there today I talked to the contractor then it needs to be dug out and we need to put drainage tiles in and we need to reseal that wall because that's a significant amount of water each year that's coming in and that that'll would cost about thirty thousand dollars to do that Gutters um, won't take gutters in place or it's that awesome. kind of stuff? It's groundwater. It's groundwater. Oh. Yeah. Um, we need to replace uh, fuel tanks at both the elementary school and the high school. Um, Jerry is talking about instead of digging them up and replacing the fuel tank, he's talking about digging them up and putting a propane adapter on, which would cost less money. I think that he's had Fred's Energy in there to give a proposal for that, and that's about $70,000 at the high school. 70000 70, and 41000 There's two tanks that need replacing. So he's saying put in propane tanks and run propane versus... Mm -hmm. Number two instead fuel of, oil. Instead of replacing the tanks. Number two because it would be cheaper. Their number two fuel oil tanks are in the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and do, do we have to report? Sam? I was going to say, do we have to report that to the EPA? Well, there are a few have an issue with it. it was, they've been there for years. There's not, there's not an issue. He's just saying no, that I they're said, going if, to need replacing. If Gary told that. Find an issue, you have right. to report. So right. we've just done similar projects in Montgomery and in Bakersfield, okay. the conversion from the number two fuel to the property. Okay. Because the business is regulated, I think it's an every year or mm -hmm. We ended up digging up our tanks at the mill because of the cost of it. Okay. So the, anyway, there's uh, tanks at both the elementary and the high school. I mean, there there are several things that that we do need to do. And some of these, they're pri the list is prioritized because there are some things that he'd like to do and there are some things that we need to do. There needs to be roof work done on this building in the next, um, I'd say, five to 10 years. So I know we're doing the windows and that's a big ticket item this year, but I think um, next year I'd recommend the drainage work. Um, but for the, I, I do think that we should do the chip boiler work this year, if there's money. I do think that we should at least do the initial investment on the tractor. And um, on that piece of the snow removal, how, how do some other schools do it? How, how are they handling that? We like, bought a tractor at Montgomery. Really? Yeah, we had, we've had, did two tractors in the time I was in Montgomery. Um, we had a John Deere first, and then uh, we bought the orange kind. Kubota. A Kubota. We bought a Kubota, an orange <laughs> tractor, a Kubota, um, in my last few years there. Maintenance runs it? Like maintenance just, uh -huh. like, you yeah. have a place to store it? Not yeah. everything and I was going to say, where are you going to so, house it? St uh, at Montgomery, we have a shed, but I think there's a shed out back at the high school that would be the, um, this year, Richard trucked it up out of the good, nobody asked him. And I did pay his trucking and, you know, I invoice. Yeah, I just want to say he went above and beyond. Like he was out on the roads a couple of times but told me about before plow trucks trying yep. to get here with his tractor on a low bed in a snowstorm. And one day he drove it. Like Martin Luther King Day, he drove it. He drove it. Oh, and never told me. I wouldn't have known because he was gone before I got there. Um, and cool. I was yeah. so happy to see him. It was the day of that huge storm, and I thought, I don't know what we're going to do. And um, he was there when I arrived at six, quarter to six in the morning. And he and a friend, he brought a friend with him to have him <laughs> do the work. What does the elementary school do? Do they have their own? Um, they, uh, the, the town will plow around. Um, the, remember, the town does the plowing of the parking lots. Both schools. Uh, both correct. schools. But they don't do, there's, there seems to be more, there's more walks at the high school than there, because people are coming in every door. And at the elementary school, they, the town does plow around that back entrance to yeah. give um, yeah. egress. But John does a lot of shoveling down here. John Weld is a great employee. He does a lot of shoveling. Some schools have snowblowers. A lot of them have. We do. Oh, we do have snowblowers. Yeah. We had snowblowers that hadn't been used in years, and um, so they did get them out. And we have used the snowblowers this year. But because Gary used his own truck and plowed, they hadn't been used in years. You had a tractor to be able to do the front mail snowblower or snowblower on it. Parts of the town's doing it. I don't think we could do the whole um, the whole yard. I mean that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of talking, plowing. That's a lot of plowing. Another thing that needs doing desperately is um, so last year the town blacktopped the driveway up until where they own, right. and then we paid the additional for that loop. Remember mm -hmm. the the drop off loop, uh, but that back parking lot is a mess, and uh, the. You know, so, so the parking lots are going to be need to be repaid too. I think I'm going to email this to you as an attachment so that you can look at it. And remember, it's pri a prioritized list, so not everything would need to be done right away. But I want you to be aware. Of some right, gives us an idea. Of yeah. Over the next couple of years. Right. To try to build. And it's it's. This whole Act 46 thing is a little bit different for me because you know how I go about things like this. I 
keep my budget really low. And then if we have a surplus, I say, okay, what can we do off our list this year before June 30th? And I don't know how the budgeting's, I've never had to work with another town and I, it's gonna be a different board and I, I don't know if that's how the budget will be going forward. So at the elementary school for the last several years, we have put like $55,000 in the budget for asbestos abatement and to redo three of the classrooms. We're right now at the point where the floors, the, the hallways, um, the gym floor, and the office floors, like these offices, the main office floors, still have those tiles that need to be, we need to do the abatement on them, and then we need to pick flooring. And I think that's going to take um, this year, this summer, and the next year's budget to get that all done. Because it, I, I don't think 50000 is enough to do all that abatement and the flooring. And the flooring will be substantial for your gym. Right. Yet, I think the flooring alone for the tile we looked at was 55000 That's without the abatement of the tile in the gym. Is that original tile in yeah. the gym? Yeah. It's all lasted well. Four years. So we can wait till April, but I just wanted you to um, have an idea, and I'll email this to you. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't know if we were meeting in April. Like I, I didn't know with the way things were going with Act Forty Six, what the plan was. <laughs> so we'll continue to meet because okay. this board will still be responsible for operational year nineteen. Okay. Regardless of what happens. Regardless. Okay. So there may be there may be months where we say we don't have anything that this board needs to do. So we're gonna okay. not meet, but we have stuff we need to do in April. So Okay. And I just wanted to let you know that once again Annette going um in conjunction with Berkshire for the last couple of years, um, has written the a grant um for the Vermont Humanities Council and receive the grant. It's a great week that she plans. And Emily Kimball, um, the middle school reading literacy teacher, and Annette will be uh, doing that the week, a week in June, the week after school gets out usually. So the last thing I have is for executive session. All right, four personnel. Yeah, four personnel. Oh, wait, I do have one more thing. Sorry. Um, we have written a grant with um, Berks uh, not Berkshire, Bakersfield uh, because the state encouraged us to have partners uh, regarding restorative practices. And um, I have a letter of support here that I took the liberty of drafting, and I'll, I'll read it to you, and I'm hoping you'll sign it or have Andy sign it. The Richmond School Board fully supports the continued use and implementation of restorative approaches in the Richford school system. The board first heard about restorative practices and their approaches at the school board meeting on September 17, 2019. Over the past two years, we have invested a significant portion of our school improvement money and our safe and healthy schools allocation from consolidated federal grants in an effort to build capacity in the pre-K through 12 staff in order to implement these tier one practices and plan, and we plan to do the same next year. It is our plan to continue our con contracted consultative services to further develop the use of these practices. The principal provides regular updates regarding implementation of these best practices to support the school community's social emotional learning strategies. Are you okay with signing this? Your September. Well, yeah, your September. Oh, 2019. Oh, I have the wrong date. And down here, you have 19. Uh, it's supposed to be 19. Oh, I have to fix it. <laughs> I have to fix it. But we use, is it okay if he signs, if I get it to him to sign? Yes. Okay. okay. I should have had you proofread that, Jay. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's my. This I didn't know. Should that be 19 or 18? 18. I did, I did the opposite. Okay. Yeah. All right, so yes. if you're okay with that, I'm going to ask Andy to sign that letter. I think everyone's okay with that, yeah. I'll make a motion to enter executive session of personnel. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor. Uh, enter an executive session. At okay. I will make a motion for 
Lynn to hire away from the table SAT counselor at the high school and literacy coach and teacher at the elementary school. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, so, Beth, we're done. Everything's on your end. So, board business. We have any future agenda items? <coughs> discussions? No. Nothing. Okay. Anything else? Oh, I do have one question on that, Cortex. I was questioned at town meeting. Um, they, somebody questioned me that they heard Enosburg is selling some of their property before the merger to to the town. Have you heard anything about that? Do you know anything about that? They're talking about the Montana there's no plans for that. There's been discussion about the Monteith House and whether it makes sense to sell that to the town. Um, it's a building that the school has tried to use in the past and has never really... Is that the one at the Cold Hollow? That's, that's the right. community yeah. center or yeah. something? That and one um, I think the, the latest discussion I heard was that they don't want to give that up because of the idea that they may want more land for Cold Hollow. Yeah. They want contigu contiguous land. I think that discussion has been going on for a while, for years, yeah. right? But the so right now it's it's kind of leased um, for nothing to the to the town through yeah. the rec committee, so they can do a community center there. So there's no discussion to sell that. Okay, just I was questioned, so I wanted to know if anybody. I hadn't heard anything, so. Okay. I heard nothing else. Do you want a motion to adjourn? There to a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can you let Jane know about the motions and the time that we adjourn? Oh, yeah, I should have written it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, I came back in at like 5.55. Yeah. Okay. And then Kevin.